Hi, I'm Birdman Mel, and I am so happy you are with us tonight. We have got a show that is going to fly around, but it's not birds like normal. No way. We're going to talk about one of God's creatures that I dearly love, butterflies. And I'm so happy you should be sitting on the other half of this screen, Jill Edwards, who's going to be our speaker tonight. Are you there, Jill? I am indeed. Thanks for having me. Oh, we are tickled to death to have you. I did do some false advertising to some of you. Jill used her head. I thought we were going to cover monarchs, and she's going to touch on those a touch. But she actually is going to, you know, the show is called Bring on the Butterflies. And she thought about, okay, you guys are from all over the country. What butterfly could, you know, we maybe interact with more than that? And I think the answer is swallowtails, but we'll see. You have to stay tuned to Jill to find out, okay? I do want to tell you now, let it out of the bag, that next week, by popular demand, you guys ask for more, you know, another video or another session, if you would, back and forth with the gentleman from Sheltered Wings. And next week, Adrian from Sheltered Wings is going to be here. And his topic, the whole 30 minutes, is going to be how do we find the right optics for you, be that binoculars or scope. So we're going to zero in more on some specific products, price ranges, and how they fit. And I think you'll enjoy it. And now while we're using his products, it's not going to be just a giant commercial. We're going to be able to try to teach you some things on when you go out and compare and shop at that locally owned family business that you will be able to buy sheltered wings for darn sure at the same price as anywhere else. And that means buy local, support that local guy who helps, you know, takes care of your ball team and pays for the firemen, you know, and that sort of thing. So I, you know, I believe in that. Don't forget to tell us where you're from. That's really, really important. That helps the speaker and me on which things, which directions we go sometimes. Helps you win a prize. And I'm gonna talk in a second about some of the prizes tonight. Keep asking some questions. Gavin, my right-hand man here, writes them down on a piece of paper, slips them to the old man. And when I can, we'll answer them on the air. And when I can't, I dash back home or we email them to Jill. And before you know it, we'll be answering them. Okay, so we'll have some fun that way. Share your opinions. Share your, you know, your experiences. And then the next week, share me some butterfly photos. We're going to give a prize of this hanging glass butterfly bath here to the one of you that sends in the best photo. How about this thing? Isn't that pretty? I like that thing. All okay. kinds. And you you know, there there might be a swallowtail in there. I don't know. We'll let her decide on that. But uh, we're going to have some fun tonight. As I said, we're going to win some prizes. And I just want to take a moment to share with you some of the prizes. I love identifying stuff in the yard and with the grandkids. And the folks at Earth, Wind, and Sky, the yours people, are giving us some regional guides. We have them all across the country. So you'll win some of these. They've got some of the coolest note cards. This one's a monarch. This guy was smart. He copied that guy so he doesn't get eaten, I think, the Viceroy. And we got a tiger swallowtail on here. So uh, and a couple of these are four different ones in the box. We'll be giving these rascals away, too. And one other fun gift, because it's getting to be, you know, hostess time for uh, parties coming up to entertain folks. We actually even have a butterfly hostess set that's got a really cool appetizer bow. There's a bottle stopper as a butterfly. I don't think that one's real, though. And fun napkins. So... You know, just a fun gift to tell you thank you for, for, for you know, tuning in tonight. And don't forget, anything old Birdman Mel shows you, yep, we got it at Songbird Station if you live in central Missouri. And come see Holly and Deb and the crew there. They'll take good, good care of you. But you can also get it from your local store. You know, they might not have it all today, but you say, hey, I saw this stuff on Birdman Mail, and they'll get it for you. Whether it's a wild bird store or that nursery or hardware store that or gift store that takes birding and butterflies serious. Okay? A couple other things I wanted to show you real fast on the commercial side of this is, let's see, we'll go start with practical. There aren't a lot of things that I believe in in butterflies that make a difference other than native plants, which the young lady will talk about. But I like this butterfly feeder because it's been used and proven by a lot of butterfly bleep, uh, you know, uh, folks that breed them. And I want to make a point that so many butterfly feeders are so darn big, I mean, these suckers aren't like hummingbird folks. They don't eat that much nectar. So you don't need a great big feeder. The other thing is, a lot of them don't have these spikes here. And I goofed. I should have cut little pieces of banana and put it on there. That really helps attract them. But most of all, these little bitty wicks here kind of are like a pad plant that many butterflies like. And we find it really increases the use versus everybody else just got them holes in there. And then most importantly, them smart guys that invented this, you know, the nectar isn't just sugar. It's important uh, salts and some attractants that are just for butterflies. You put the wrong stuff in here and you can hurt them instead of help them. So this is good stuff I like. 
Got me a butterfly house here. Folks, I hate to tell you, but I truly believe that's a very nice garden decoration. There's been like eight studies I've studied, and I think when they open the door and look in there, now even if you put sticks and stuff, probably most of the time it's going to be spiders in there. But, uh, you know, it looks good in your garden, so nice stuff to have. Most stores, you know, we all have these pretty flags and all that sort of stuff. But you guys know that kids are one of my loves, so I got to go into this thing. I love this little book here with little butterflies in the front, and me and the little grandkids can go through, and we learn all about the butterfly. And I love playing butterfly bingo with the boys. And then, you know, it doesn't hurt to, to catch and release like on a fish. So we got these critter cages, and we got this net, and we got this thing where we look at it real close. So fun things that you can get at Songbird Station. Great Christmas presents, but you can also get them at your local store. Last but not least, a couple other educational things, although this one's a fun one. If you want to look at butterflies every day at work, we got a screensaver for that rascal. We got a mouse pad for them, and we even got cleaning cloth to keep everything clean. So fun, fun, fun butterfly stuff. But I want to end with books. I truly believe that, you know, the, the key is plants, as this young lady will say. So there's a neat little book uh, from Story that is uh, How to Grow a Butterfly Garden. There, this is my favorite one from Adventure Publications. This one happens to be on the upper Midwest, native plant gardening for birds, bees, and you guessed it, butterflies. Okay, got another one here that's gardening for butterflies. Really like this one. It's actually put out by the Butterfly Society, and we stocked that. Oops, I forgot. We even got a butterfly ruler, so you can keep track of how long something is and look at butterflies at the same time. Last but not least, I went with this one because our speaker tonight reminded me she loves this book as much I do and it's called The Family Butterfly Book and again it's from Story and it's a great great book with lots of projects in it so fun stuff we're going to be giving away several prizes out of what I've shown you and that's the end of my commercial but you know how do you win tell us where you're from say hi to old Birdman Mel and tell us what you like as we go along through here okay let me look through my notes I think I about did oh now's the chance to win I got three quick questions what butterfly migrates back to Mexico forest every year? Okay. Question number two. Name two native plants that butterflies benefit from, including one that's critical to that migration of that butterfly I just asked you about that goes back to Mexico. Okay. So think about that real hard. Number three. What's a larval butterfly plant? And name three of them. Okay. So get those answers in. I know she'll be giving you those answers as we go forward here, okay? And speaking of she, Jill, are you still over there after all my talking? Yeah, I am here to tell you about Swallowtail. Hey, it's time for Birdman Mel to get off here, and we're turning this thing over to Jill. So Jill, let's have some fun and learn something about butterflies. Let's do it. Thank you, Birdman Mel. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, are you all seeing my presentation? Yep. See you Excellent. good. All right, tonight we are going to talk about some of my favorite kinds of butterflies, swallowtails. I am Jill Edwards, and I'm from Columbia, Missouri. I'm a Missouri Master Naturalist, and I'll tell you about what that program is. I'm in the Boonslick chapter of the Missouri Master Naturalist, and I am a butterfly advocate. I am not a butterfly expert, but I am absolutely interested in all things butterfly. So if I cannot answer any questions that you have, I will find answers for you. All right, let's do this. All right, first, what gave me the idea to talk about swallowtails and not monarchs was Stan's program last week. Last week on Birdman Mal, they talked about how birds survive the winter. And it got me thinking about non-migrating butterflies that we have in our part of the world and how they make it through the cold months. So we're going to talk about swallowtails because they are butterflies that do just that. And here is the plan. I'm going to tell you about five common kinds of swallowtail butterflies. You'll be able to look at the caterpillar and know the butterfly that they're going to become. And most importantly, you're going to find out what native plants and bushes and trees you need to plant to, in order to attract swallowtails, other butterflies, and other pollinators to your yard. Like and the it. last thing I will do is answer an age-old question, and it is, why did the woolly worm cross the road? Some of you call them woolly bears. I'm a Missouri girl, so they are woolly worms here. And you may have already started seeing them 
crossing highways, trucking across the highway, lots and lots of them. So I will tell you at the end of the program what they're up to. All right. And then I wanted to mention, I know a lot of people have people in their lives that are scared of bugs, kids, and even big people. So I want you to know that butterflies do not bite. They actually have no mouth parts. They are a great gateway bug. If you got somebody who's scared of all bugs, butterflies a good place to start because they're not going to get bitten by a butterfly. But do, warning, butterflies do not bite, but some caterpillars do. So be careful if you're around caterpillars. None of these swallowtail caterpillars I'm going to show you tonight bite, but they do have a defense mechanism that I will tell you about. Cool. All right, we're going to talk about swallowtail butterflies. They are very easy to identify. You'll see these tails on these. Very easy to tell what a swallowtail is. They have tails on their hind wings, and that's in order to confuse bird predators. They look like an insect head as they're flying. So if a bird or other predator gets a hold of one of those tails, they can actually take it off, and a swallowtail will still be okay and still fly. So you may run into a swallowtail at some point without a tail, and that means it has had quite an adventure. Um, there are about 20 kinds of swallowtails in North America. All right. Other things I'd like you to know. I always thought before I got into butterflies that small butterflies were baby butterflies and that they were going to get bigger. But that is not the case. When a butterfly emerges from the chrysalis, it's about the size it's going to be. In some cases, like the monarchs that fly to Mexico, they do get a little tougher and bigger. Um, but in most cases, the way they're born is the size they're going to be. That picture at the top is an eastern tail blue butterfly, an extremely common butterfly, and little. And then picture of a black swallowtail, you can see they're much bigger. It's there on a dandelion. Um, all right. So the life cycle of a swallowtail, I shoved it all on one slide, so I'll try to get through it quick. Um, from egg to butterfly um, to the end of the butterfly's life takes around a, a month and a half. So the first group comes out late April, early June, and these are swallowtails that have actually overwintered in their chrysalis. And then they mate. Um, eggs hatch in around three to seven days, depending on the type of uh, egg and caterpillar. And usually swallowtail caterpillars in their first few stages look just like bird poop. And so they blend right in to wherever they are on leaves or their host plant. But as they grow and they molt, their appearance changes based on their species. And they can be very, very different, as you are going to learn shortly how those caterpillars end up. Um, caterpillars spend two to four weeks eating their host plants, and then they turn into a chrysalis. I'm going to show you some chrysalises tonight, too. And then 10 to 14 days later, a butterfly emerges. Or if it's late summer and early fall, like right about now, the chrysalis might overwinter and then come out in the following spring. And so I actually have some I can show you at the end of this presentation that are going to overwinter. Hibernation is called diapause. The caterpillar produces a form of like internal antifreeze, so they don't freeze out in the weather. Um, and then most swallowtail butterflies live around 10 to 12 days. Some can live longer. That can be a surprise to people. Lots of butterflies are not with us very long. So that's a little bit about the life cycle. I promise the rest of the slides don't get too wordy. And I want to show you something. They all share one trait, all swallowtails. They have a defense mechanism. And it's this orange horn that are kind of sticking out here. It's called an, an osmeterium. It's an organ located behind where their true head is. And you're going to see why we're saying that. Um, and when a caterpillar is threatened, it will come out and emit a foul smell. So that is something that happens. And I personally do not like to distress butterflies or caterpillars. So um, as much as you can, if you're seeing butterflies and caterpillars, try not to touch them. Um, they certainly don't like it. And you might have something on your hands that's going to hurt them. Like maybe you pet a dog that's using flea dip. Um, or you have something else on your hand that might make that caterpillar sick or worse. 
So my advice to you, don't touch caterpillars and butterflies. I have seen the osmentarium though, um, by accident. When I'm, you know, moving caterpillars around, I accidentally poke the wrong one. I get to see this. All right, this is gonna be our first butterfly tonight, the black swallowtail. And that picture off to the left is actually the first black swallowtail I ever raised. And that's a picture of it, they're gorgeous. The host plants for the black swallowtail, these are easy. They're all in the carrot family. So fennel, dill, carrot, celery, parsley um, are all things that swallowtail caterpillars eat. And this is a swallowtail caterpillar right here on this dill. Um, this is, if you've ever thought about raising butterflies or, you know, taking a crack at that, this is a good butterfly to start with because they do eat parsley. And so organic parsley from a grocery store, if you run out of parsley at home, is available. So that is a good butterfly. You always have like an emergency food supply ready if needed. Hey, Jill, a couple quick questions. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that uh, herb pot my wife's got on the patio that's got all that stuff, that, that could actually be helpful to the butterflies then. With some yep. of those, she's got some of that stuff in there. Okay, one other thing I want to ask. So, uh, one of our listeners came in, and it's not about swallowtails, uh, but I wanted to ask this question. She's waiting on four monarchs to emerge from a chrysalis in the next day or so. Our temperatures are going to be only a high of 55 Friday and Saturday. Will it be okay to release them, or what do you suggest? It's okay to release them. They are certainly late to the party. The monarch's leaving right now. Oh, I guess it makes, it depends on where they are. Did you tell me now, where they are? The, I should have asked that. Mindy, yeah. it'll depend where you are, but even here in Missouri, you were thinking it would be okay. Is that correct? Yeah, it would be, it's gonna be fine. I have one chrysalis left as well. It's very end of the season. So everybody's on the way to Mexico right now, but they can bring up the rear. So yes, absolutely cut them loose. And they'll one move other, along, unless you yeah, feel like I, driving to Texas. Yeah. And now, Susan sa that. says, what happens if they run out of the host plant that they're eating? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens, unfortunately. You know, butterflies, especially monarchs, they'll follow that fresh milkweed when they come in the spring. And then they come back down on their way to Mexico as that milkweed um, starts to die off. And so here and there... They could find some milkweed. It can be kind of sad, but again, end of the season. So let's yep. hope they find some milkweed along the way. Okay. Well, I'll let you carry on, but do know I got a bunch of questions as we get toward the end, okay? You got it. You got it. And thanks, folks. Keep them coming in. We do. will get keep back asking. to you guys. I like it. You bet. All right. So back to black swallowtails. These are the caterpillars. Um, the eggs, first of all are round, all swallowtail eggs that I'm gonna to mention tonight are round. They're just different colors. This is a light yellow. And then these are the caterpillars. They can kind of be different. Um, a big like light green stripe with black stripes and orange dots. This is more common to see one that looks like this, but you might also see a black one that looks like this. And then before the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis stage, this is what it does. It attaches to a stem or other surface, and they kind of do it like a telephone lineman. You know, they got their front silk edge and then the bottom, and they kind of get into that position for about 24 hours, and then they turn into a chrysalis. Here's the chrysalis right here. Swallowtail chrysalises can be different colors. Sometimes they try to match what they're on. So this one, as you can see, is trying to match the material that it's on and hanging like that lineman right here and then there's another down here and then when two butterflies like each other very much this is what it looks like if you have never seen that those are two swallowtails mating um, and then the butterfly itself see here this one on this cone flower gorgeous butterfly um, yeah. and another picture here um, the orange really keeps predators away so you'll see that, that flashy orange on a lot of different butterflies. Um, and it says to the world, hey, I taste gross. Don't eat me. <laughs> All right. On we go to one of my favorite kinds of swallowtails. They're all my favorite. You're going to hear me say that forever. Spicebush swallowtails. The host plants are easy. There's two of them, spicebush and sassafras. And those of you who are in or near Missouri, 
They are available through the Missouri Wildflower Nursery and other places. Um, so you can order this to attract uh, spikeless swallowtails and other pollinators to your yard. Um, and then the birds love eating those spikebush berries. So good for birds as well. Lots of these plants are. Yep. And the caterpillars, these are the freakiest of the swallowtail caterpillars. First, their egg is white. You can see that. And then when a swallowtail, swallowtail is just emerges, it looks like bird poop, like I said earlier. <laughs> There's one that looks like bird poop. And then as they get bigger, they take on that bright green color um, and they have false eye spots. They're actually not looking at you from these eye spots. Their eyes are actually under their head. But this is something they've evolved to have on their heads because they look like snakes. They look like scary predators. This is something they do to keep things away from them. And then what's happening here, you can kind of see this silk line behind this caterpillar and then this one too. What swallow, spice bush swallowtails do for shelter is they lay down some silk on that leaf and then crawl in the middle and then the leaf will actually curl over and hide them. Like here's an example right here of what the leaves do. And they use that for shelter. And as you're looking for caterpillars, you're probably gonna see a lot of leaves that have the silk trail without a caterpillar in it because they've moved on to a different leaf. And so that is a cool way to find them. And then I always think they look at you like they're judging you. They're kind of <laughs> caterpillars that keep an eye yeah. on you. So I think they're just fascinating. Look at all these different kinds. Here's a little new one right here, hiding in the corner. Looks like bird poop. And then as they get to the end of being a caterpillar, they'll actually purge everything in their bellies and the other side. And so they kind of emptied themselves out turn into this orange color, and then they become a chrysalis. And here are some examples of chrysalis for spice bush swallowtail. See how it's matching kind of the color of the surface that it's on. I found this picture as I was searching. I'm hoping my mom's watching tonight just because I want to say, hey, they have stamps with spice bush swallowtails on them, mom. And the holidays are coming, like Birdman Bell says. And so that might be something, you know, that someone might want that's related yeah. to you. Or any of the stuff <laughs> that Birdman Mel showed at the beginning. I'll take any uh -oh. of that stuff too, Mom. All right. Okay, so these are the butterflies. Gorgeous, gorgeous butterfly. This is the first spice bush swallowtail that I released this spring. It actually spent the winter hanging from the ceiling in my unheated garage. Um, I think it went into chrysalis early October last year. And I got my first spice bush on April 15th is when it came out. So one of my very favorite butterflies. They're just gorgeous. May I interrupt a second? Somebody you asked how, how you can tell which caterpillars are which butterflies. And all I've ever known to do to tell people is, you know, there are we've, some of these books we talked about show that. And it, it's just learning it. And then this practice is, makes perfect, right? Yep, that's exactly right. And then another thing is, if you're seeing a caterpillar, it's on a host plant. So if you can identify that plant, that's going to give you another clue as to what kind of butterfly that caterpillar is going to turn into. And then, you know, there's lots of stuff on the internet. I love my family butterfly yep, yep. book. It has great big pictures so that you can kind of see. Gives examples of caterpillars, their stages, the range of the butterfly. So it's a good ID thing too. And it's fun to try to figure out what kind of butterfly a caterpillar will turn into. So if you got kids, you can send them out in the yard, see what they find and figure out that host plant. And you'll know what butterflies to look for. You bet. Other questions? Uh, one other one, uh, I'll, I'll hit some. This is gonna go off topic, but I wanna make sure we answer. Eric says he's got small, all yellow butterflies that's in his backyard every day. What are the small yellow ones called? They might be sulfurs. It depends. If you could throw up a picture in the comments, we can look and see. Okay. And then Judy said, I have quite a few small white butterflies in my yard. Can you tell me what they are? And I know these are very hard general questions for you. It's going to depend on where they are as well. Okay, gotcha. Location? 
We do not have location on either one of those. We'll start doing that. that. Yep. And if you it guys want to send, send I back your location. my book, lots of butterflies yep. in there. If you, can, if you will send us back, folks, and from now on tonight, and I should have thought of this every night, send us your location when you have a question. And this will probably happen after the show, but we will absolutely get back to you with these answers. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And if you do post a picture in the comments, I know there's a lot of nature nerds watching this right now. So There you go. Yeah. Probably get your answer before I get it to you. Okay. All right. Okay. Next up is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. Um, and they can be found on tulip, ash, apple, cherry trees. Um and they are also available through Missouri Wildflower Nursery. But the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail, very identifiable. Here's what their caterpillars look like. First, their eggs are a light yellow. And then they, too, have the false eye spot. So, but they look a little different than that. I think that spice bush is kind of judgy, whereas this Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is just kind of checking you out. A little bit more friendly look at least a human, but predators gonna look at that, think it's a snake and move right along. And then there's a little bird poop one right there too. So Eastern Tiger Swallowtail and gorgeous butterfly. My friend Becky took this picture right here and it could sell. She should sell her pictures, they're so gorgeous. If you're here watching tonight, Becky, you rock. Um, but another very pretty identifiable butterfly. And here's this chrysalis hanging on in that lineman's pose. All right, zebra swallowtail. They like one thing and it's pawpaw trees. And also available from Missouri Wildfire Nursery and other places. Um, pawpaw trees, that is Missouri's official state fruit tree, I found out as I was updating this PowerPoint. So zebra swallowtail. Hey, Julie. And the, just, the just, eggs for zebra swallowtails change color. So like right when it's new, kind of greenish, then it turns kind of orangish. And then younger caterpillars have these black stripes and the orange. And as they get bigger, they turn into this light green, bright yellow line. And so that's what their caterpillars look like on the pawpaw trees. And then here is the butterfly. Another absolutely gorgeous butterfly. The chrysalis is a little different. See how it's folding over there? Kind of different. If, you're, if you've got two to compare and one's a zebra, you'd be able to figure it out from that. Um, and another gorgeous picture from my friend Becky of a zebra swallowtail. And all right, what's next? Pipevine swallowtail. This is our last butterfly. A gorgeous blue. Host plants are the pipe vines. So woolly pipe vine around here, also called Dutchman's pipe, is what they're hungry for. And the caterpillars, their eggs, bright orange. And then the mamas tend to lay them in little clumps like this. Most butterfly mamas will put like one on a leaf and then move on to the next leaf. This is a little different. They pop a bunch in and good luck to all of them. Um, <laughs> and then look how different this caterpillar looks than the other ones that we've seen tonight. The pipe vine caterpillar is a black caterpillar with orange bumps um, very different looking than the other caterpillars we've seen tonight and the butterfly it becomes another gorgeous with the blue um, that blue color also signal signals to predators that they taste yucky so a lot of butterflies will mimic um, uh, swallowtail butterflies and other butterflies to send that message to predators and then their chrysalis can be a little curvy. See how this one's kind of curvy. And so, and again, matching the surface that they are on is common for the chrysalis of all swallowtails. So, okay, time to review. We went over five common kinds of swallowtails. The black swallowtail, see that caterpillar and this pretty butterfly from carrot family. Spice bush. This little fake eyed thing turns into a spice bush swallowtail. The tiger swallowtail looks a little bit like the spice bush, but kind of has a different expression on its face. Um, and then there's the zebra swallowtail and the pipe vine. And so, whoop, those are the butterflies you learned about tonight. So I hope it will help you identify caterpillars that you might see in your world. 
And Ferdinand Mel mentioned this. This is my favorite book to use. We have events where we're always doing kid activities and people asking about butterflies. And this is a great book to have. It has fun projects. Um, and then just excellent ID and host plant information. And then these are some plant resources, native plant resources around Missouri. I know a lot of you are listening from farther away, but this slide might you, give you some ideas of where you could find native plants in your area. Our Missouri Department of Conservation has some great resources on its website, like what tree, where to put it, how to plant it, how to prune it. And so you can use that regardless of where you are. They also have a great uh, brochure on native plants for your landscape that you can download um, to know what kind of native wildflowers, because you're gonna need those native wildflowers for all the butterflies that emerge out of those caterpillars. And then MDC, the Missouri Department of Conservation has two publications that are outstanding the Missouri Conservationist Magazine and the Explorer Magazine. Those are for kids. If you do not receive those, you can go online, sign up for those. They are free to all Missourians and you can order them if you're outside Missouri for a charge. So check those out, especially the Kid Magazine, the Explorer Magazine. They have really cool little ID books that you can get out and help you identify all kinds of creatures. Um, and then some places in our state where you can order native plants. These are not the only ones. These are just common ones, the Missouri Wildflower Nursery. I did check their website because they do have some sold out stuff, but all of the slides where I mentioned that those were for sale from Missouri Wildflower Nursery, they are not sold out yet, but I do not know how long that will last. If you order things, they'll actually mail the plants to you um, end of February all the way into April. So you'll see when you order when it is going to be mailed to you. Um, I ordered spice bush last year and it's planting and doing very well in my backyard. Um, trees and shrubs, you can go through the White State uh, Forest Nursery and they started accepting um, orders last month. And then I mentioned earlier, I'm a Missouri Master Naturalist. Many states have Master Naturalist programs um, it's an adult volunteer program where I went through three months of training, um, 40 hours worth of training on Missouri's natural resources. So you learn about prairies and plants and animals and rivers, all kinds of stuff, Missouri. Um, and then we do advanced training. This actually counts as advanced training for Missouri Master Naturalists, if you're listening. Um, we do advanced training, eight hours worth a year, and then we serve 40 volunteer hours doing all kinds of things. So if you have any interest in nature, wanna get out more, check out the Missouri Master Naturalist Program, or if you're outside the state, check to see if they have one in your state. It is fantastic. Um, there are also Missouri Master Gardeners that know a whole lot. Um, a similar kind of program where you go through training, you stay updated to stay certified. And then do look for native plant sales. Wherever you are, they're going to start coming around, you know, sometimes late February-ish and March. So be on the lookout for those native plant sales. Hey, Julie, right. thank you very, very much. All right. And one more thing. Oh, I got to tell you about the woolly worms, too. But if you see a butterfly, you might be the only one that ever sees that butterfly. They don't live very long, 10 to 12 days. So... I give you advice, and that is you see any butterfly, you slow down for a minute, watch that butterfly, and wonder about the magic of life, how that came to be that those caterpillars turned into such gorgeous butterflies. And then, last thing, why did the woolly worm cross the road? They're looking for a place to hibernate. Um, woolly worms eat plants, so they're, they eat like a lot of stuff, so grass, dandelions, maple leaves. A lot of people will say that woolly worms can forecast winter weather. They say if it's more brown, you're going to have an awful winter. Or no, more brown, you're going to have a great winter. More black, you're looking at a bad winter. And is that true? No, it is not. But you can pretend that it is. Um, here in Missouri, the weather changes every 10 minutes. So you can say it's true. The more brown a woolly worm is, the older that caterpillar is. And the more well-fed, the more black, the younger caterpillar and they're hungry. And woolly worms will emerge next April 
as Isabella Tiger Mom. Hey, yeah. So now you know all about woolly worms. Hey, thank you very, very much. Thank you for joining me this evening. And I will come back and talk about monarchs if Birdman Mel will have hey, me. We, and we, we can will... do that next, like, May, June-ish. And then I'll have all kinds of stuff I can show you. Eggs, Sounds cool. Chrysalis, yeah. and butterflies. Let's do it. Hey, All thank right. you again so very, very much, Joe. I really appreciate it, and I thank everybody for staying with us. I saw nobody leaving, so you, you captivated them, so I, I thank you very much. Folks, let her know. Go ahead and make some comments. Keep asking some questions. We are mm -hmm. forwarding those to her by email, and, and she'll be posting some answers. Just real quick, a couple of you ads that I, I wanted to speak to. Somebody said, what about a bird bath for uh, uh, butterflies? Really, I find the best thing to do that I've done is some uh, some sand baths, if you would. Just having a spot uh, mm -hmm. in a dry bed stream I use. Uh, just I built some sand banks on there that's in a sunny spot. I always yep. use the phrase on a butterfly feeder. And, uh, you know, even a butterfly garden, it applies to a little bit. I say, put it down low where the wind don't blow, you know. That's so uh, if, if you want to have somebody come to that feeder that I showed you before, there's little hooks that, that retailers say that you can hang that down low. I mix yep. just a little bit of rock salt into the, uh, uh, excuse me, not rock salt, but sea salt uh, yep. into the uh, uh, sand. You'll see butterflies go a lot of times to dead things along the road and stuff, and they're going there for the salt. So yep. that's why we do those things. So uh, keep those questions coming. Remember, if you see something, you like that book, that, that family butterfly book or whatever, you know, buy it from those local guys. They can get it for you. They'll be very, very competitive, and they'll be there to answer your questions. You know, they're the ones, that, like I said before, that's going to support your ball team, pay for the firemen, whatever. And, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't know that Amazon ever did that here in Mexico, Missouri, where I know some of the local tap guys here in town and over in Columbia do that. So make sure you anything you see that I ever show up that you do that. Want to remind you one last time, join us uh, next week. Adrian uh, from Sheltered Wings will be here, and we'll be talking about picking the right optics for you. I want to thank one more time, Jill, and I want to t thank Gavin. My daughter Becky's back home getting ready to help me with questions, and Annette and uh, Erica that's behind the scenes. Just These things wouldn't happen without a team, so thanks to all of those. And I'm going to close just a little bit different than I normally do. I, I kind of like the, the comment that Jill said when... Uh, uh, you know, that might be the only butterfly you see. So that that's really why I always tell you, you know, take those five minutes, set one spot, look around, see, touch, feel, smell, all that stuff that God put here in the world for us. But tonight I'm going to close with the thought that, you know, remember, nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time to listen to the birds sing and watch that butterfly float by. Folks, have a great week. I really appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.